guys, I'm Prodigy from Airsoft Team Kilo23. Now recently I've had a lot of requests for how-to videos and stuff. People want to see more of how to do things, just random odd airsoft things that people tend to have problems with. So I just decided to do a random little uh, DIY project I've been working on lately. It's on my ICSM4. Now from the last videos, if you guys watch my videos regularly, you can see that I've done a little bit to it. It's got the uh, little cheap MC Star DOS sight on here and a Halo mock suppressor. Now I really love this gun, it's really nice. I have had a few problems with it, but they're not that big of a deal. They're pretty easy to overcome. So the DIY project we're gonna be working on today is actually how to install a regular stock onto an ICSM4. Now you're probably asking, why do this? What's the point of putting a, another stock on there to stick with the original stock that came with the gun? The main reason for this for me is because of the peck box. I'm not a fan of peck boxes. They're okay. I gotta admit, uh, some guns they look amazing on. Some guns are really functional on if you're having trouble fitting a certain kind of battery into the battery compartment, like on a SIG or something along those lines. Yeah, they're great. But M4s, I'm just not a fan of them. Now we're gonna be installing this A and K crane stock on here instead of the LE stock. I've had this crane stock laying around for several months now, ever since I put a full stock in my SR25 and I haven't really had a use for it. So I figured, what the heck, let's modify my ICSM4, get it to fit on there. This is gonna be the project for the day, guys. Show you how to modify the ICS existing hardware so it'll accept the standard stocks. Now, before we get started on this little DIY project, I wanna get it out there that I did create a blog on blogspot.com for anyone who wants to talk to me or just comment on all the work that I'm doing. Now I'm going to start posting every little thing I do to my guns on there as often as I can so you guys can kind of keep up with what I'm doing to my stuff, see what's going on with all my guns, all the guns I'm looking at, all my team's guns, everything like that. So yeah, if you guys are interested, if you have a Blogspot account, go check it out. I just made it the other day. It's not super uh, up to date or really high tech or anything. It's just a blog. You can just comment on it. I've got a poll, a couple links there, some ads. and. Uh, just a handful of items that might be cool. So check that out, there's a link at the bottom of this page here. Now there's a link at the bottom of this page, you can type that in on your search bar and click go and go check it out. Some really awesome stuff, I hope to get a handful of followers as soon as I can just to get that thing moving. Now I've always been a fan of AEG retractable stocks, they're just, they're comfortable, they're easy to use, stuff like that. But LE stocks, you know, they don't go all the way for me, they don't hold batteries, they're just kind of there. So let's go ahead and install the A and K stock. First step in installing the stock is removing the original hardware. So if I go ahead and retract this all the way, pull down on that thing a little bit, and your stock will come off pretty easily. Now the next step in the process is the most painful one, so you'll just have to bear with me here. And there is a long aggravating screw at the end of this inside the buffer tube. So go ahead and unscrew that, and there's a washer behind it and you can go ahead and take this off once you're done unscrewing it. Now with that all done, the buffer tube's off. You have your screw here and the washer. You can pretty much toss those aside because you're not gonna be using them anymore if you're installing this new stock. Now as you can kind of see here, I've had to sound, sand down the top of these rails. Normally uh, the ICS buffer tube is about a millimeter, millimeter and a half wider on those rails than other standard stocks. So if you want to install any kind of other stock, you're going to have to file those down. Now a regular metal file will do the job fine. It might take a little bit of work and some time, maybe some scraped up hands if you're not that good with a metal file, but it'll get the job done. Now the next step in actually getting this buffer tube to fit on correctly is finding a screw that will fit appropriately. Usually when you're screwing a screw into the back of this thing, it's being um, stuck up into the spring guide inside the gearbox. Now because of ICS's design, their screw uh, threading is right here at the end of this. So you're looking at about an inch and a half, two inches of room here that you got to deal with. So we have the A and K buffer tube, we can go ahead and slide that on. It fits pretty securely, so that's good. Now you'll have the original A and K hardware to mount that on there. That's this little weird like washer, modified washer looking thing got the bottom cut out so you can actually have wiring running under this. Now 
I did a lot of looking, I have a load of spare parts and stuff, but it took me some time still to find a correct screw to fit this. So I had this old screw lying around, it's a uh, old Allen key thing, it's to mount a, uh, an old SRC Harris style bipod that I have. And I wasn't using it at the time, so I figured it'll fit perfectly on this. But even still, it's not a perfect uh, match lengthwise. So I had to install a washer on the end, and that fits pretty well in the end of that. So um, you, know, you can just stick this in the end of the buffer tube and screw it in with a, uh, an Allen key, and it should, should fit just fine. Now we have the A and K buffer tube installed. We can go ahead and install the crane stock, and this is probably the easiest part of the whole thing. Let's pull down on this tab. be kind of a pain but it works all right so we have the a and k crane stock installed it's a little wiggly but it's something that can't be fixed with electrical tape so you're thinking okay there's no need for a peck box anymore no nah, sorry guys gun still wired to the front so stay tuned next diy video i'll try to get that filmed as soon as possible for you guys I'll be showing you how to rewire the gun to the back without paying any money whatsoever except for, of course, a soldering gun, some solder, and some heat shrink. Stay tuned, check that out, hopefully it'll be helpful to you guys that are really wanting to do stuff like this in the future. Don't forget, check out the Airsoft Team Kilo 23 blog, astkilo23.blogspot.com. There's a link right here, check it out. I'm Prodigy from Airsoft Team Kilo 23, signing off.